Yo fam, welcome to episode two of Building the Brand. If you watched episode one, I appreciate you guys. So welcome back to another episode. And uh, you may ask kind of like what this season or what this series is about. And it's pretty much just showing you guys an inside look of me going through the trenches of our business. Um, now obviously there are businesses that I do have that I do not show on social media and and it's okay. And maybe eventually I'll talk about it, um, you know, because this past year in 2020, obviously with the world being a totally different time for all of us, um, I can gladly say that I was blessed enough to be able to uh, be able to provide for my family. And, uh, you know, my heart resides with those, you know, that have gone through unfortunate circumstances. And so, you know, a new year and we have new goals, we have new achievements to go after. And so I hope that this year brings you plenty of blessings. Um, with Motive Brand have launching this past weekend, you know, it has really brought back like a fire inside me to show you guys like, what I've been going through in my life. I mean, uh, we plan on showing you, or I plan on showing you from my camera's perspective, all the um, the bad things going on with the business, all the good things going on with the business, but also showing you like, um, you know, a lot of sneak peeks of our business because a lot of people always talk about their business, but not really many people show you the inside look of what it really takes to build a business. And um, from a young entrepreneur standpoint, I'm not really as young anymore, I'm 29, but I wanted to sh give you guys like a better understanding of what it takes to build a business. Um, you know, we just filmed episode one of our podcast with me, Derek and Brad, uh, my two other business partners, and I think it went really well. It was a great way to um, vent how we really felt um, about building the business and, and everything that it took. And so we understand that this is a new chapter in our lives that we, We'll definitely learn a lot from and I want to share our experiences um, with you guys and you know you guys know me as Hong Fit that have been just directing my attention directly towards fitness and everything associated with fitness but you know as fitness is a part of my life and always will be um, you know that is not my main you know goals anymore and I'm what I'm, I'm really just now that I've grown so much, I wanted to show you and give you a, more of an understanding of like the risks, the the advantages, the benefits, the uh, the disadvantages of having your own business and, and everything that it truly takes because I, I think that, you know, in this generation, a lot of people, uh, whether you're, you know, 18 or 30 or 40 or whatever age you are, um, you can start a business and, and make it flourish. And so um, obviously the other business that I have, you guys know, is Zephyr Collection. And that is a business that I started a while ago. We're launching this 30th, the, this Friday, January 30th at 10 a.m. or noon Central Standard Time, I think. And I'm so excited to just unveil all the new stuff that I've been working on. Um, this year is going to be great. I mean, so... That's gonna be fun, and uh, hope you all enjoyed the video, and please like, comment, share, subscribe, and yeah, enjoy the rest of the video. Today is Tuesday, January 20 something, I, I don't know. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. January like 25th or something like that. Uh, at the warehouse right now, shipping a good amount of orders from today and yesterday, and uh, you know, when you guys running distribution and stuff, you would think that in the beginning you have the shipping stuff down. Turns out you don't. Uh, but we're we're you know kind of getting things going. And as a new company, we try to get some like FedEx rates. We try to get like UPS rates and stuff. But but because of COVID, like all the rates are extremely high. And there's a lot of people that you know these companies told Derek we aren't hurting for your business and so that just tells us please fuck off <laughs> until we get like a bigger amount of shipping quantities and i guess like more uh saturated with the company and stuff before we can get good rates um so as of right now we're using the post office so like yesterday uh which was monday we had like all the stuff U usps of course didn't even come pick up with thousands of freaking packages and they didn't come pick up so we had to, Derek and I made like multiple trips to the post office and back. Thank God there's one near here. And uh, we had to hand deliver it to the back of USPS to drop off all the stuff. 
So, you know, that was a nightmare. And, uh, you know, we're currently using like three different facilities, whether it be FedEx or UPS or um, USPS, depending on like what kind of option they choose. And, you know, hopefully within the next few months, we're going to be using USPS uh, or FedEx or UPS, not USPS because they're heavily unreliable. And um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's it. We're here and shipping some packages. Derek has been dealing with stamps.com. This is a fucking, fucking nightmare. Cheese. We got all these orders to print. Cheese. Cheese, bro. Tell them, bro. Cheese. If you guys are wondering um, whether we sold out or not, we did sell out of a lot of different items, mainly women, um, but we wanted to kind of counter that in the very beginning, so we ordered an exponentially greater amount of inventory so we wouldn't sell out. Um, so we, you know, we ordered enough inventory to last us, you know, a few weeks after launch because we knew that, you know, people would probably be pretty mad or if some people only ordered one or two items like their first order as a test, they'd come back and order some new stuff. So we like prepared ourselves for all of that. Um, you know, obviously the financial investment was a lot bigger than if we just order smaller quantity just to sell out but we you know chinese new year is coming and if you guys own any e-commerce businesses or deal directly with china or overseas you know that lunar new year slash chinese new year um like they're all closed for a month and so we're kind of running into those issues and obviously covid so there's a lot of delays a lot of little things that you don't really think about but when you do deal when you do run into these uh these scenarios then you kind of you know are a lot more grateful for these little things not to go wrong so um also like another question that we've been getting from people is like where are clothes made we are obviously making majority of our clothes um, in china but we're also working with different countries um, in the very near future that we will be exporting out of just because of duties um, a lot of people just don't like china or maybe there's just better alternatives for certain things in different countries but as of right now majority of stuff is made in china and you know believe me when i say we have explored um, u.s production um, even early 2020 when we went to um, the trade show in Vegas, we met a few manufacturers. And what a lot of people don't understand is when you're dealing with clothing, um, how do you get majority of the, 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 the fabrics, the, you know, the mills, right? Because our clothing doesn't comprise of cotton, um, you know, and even if it does, majority, if not all, the raw material of the fabric will come from overseas. And majority of that overseas is either China, Vietnam, or Taiwan, etc. So, you know, I know that some people are obviously, you know, thinking about like, oh, they don't want to support the brand because some of the clothes are made in China. But you guys have to understand from a quality standpoint, from a from a from a uh, quality standpoint, from a price standpoint, customer service turnkey reliability in my opinion china is the absolute best um you know we've de like i said we've dealt with u.s manufacturers and during the pandemic they like literally ignored us and if they didn't ignore us they were super super slow and um you know the pricing was just awful um we even explored getting like raw material from overseas and then just finishing the production in the US and it was exponentially more expensive. Like I'm talking about like not one or two dollars, we're talking about like eight to ten dollars more per product. And if we did that, we would have to charge significantly higher prices um, in, in, um, in our store. And a lot of people obviously would not pay for that or we wouldn't be able to justify charging like 90 to 100 dollars for joggers when we can just charge you guys in the 60s um and then you guys will be a lot more happy and to be honest uh you know i myself with zephyr collection have already like explored that in the future or in the present present times or in the past and it just wasn't it just didn't make sense so i do want to show you guys my outfit of the day right now because i really like this outfit um we have this jacket uh, my buddy nick owns a company called impact um and this is his like you know his own clothing brand so i love this jacket it's more like a retro varsity jacket vibe uh, we have the smoke 
Concord T from Zephyr Collection. We got ZC right here. Uh, these are launching uh, late February, which I'm really excited about to restock. We've been sold out all majority of last year. Um, and then we have the um, black transition joggers from Motive. Uh, I'm wearing a size medium. Actually, these are dirty, so I wore it again today because I absolutely freaking love these joggers. And if you haven't purchased Motive before, I, tr I promise you, these will probably be your new favorite joggers. It's so like, obviously stretchy, but also like super soft, super stretchy, and, and, and it just feels like you're not wearing anything. So that's the outfit of the day. And I got some uh, Nike Vapor Maxes, all white, of course. It's the vibe, you know what I mean? It's a casual vibe, comfortable vibe. Close your account, French three. Hi, Alyssa. Um, this order, shout out to Roma Patel from the Motive family. Derek's packing y'all's orders too, man. Hell yeah. Of course we are. Yo fam, what's up? Today is January 28th. Um, so it's the next day from yesterday's clip. And I'm headed to the gym right now. It's about 4 p.m. Uh, I've been working um, at home all day and it just feels good to get out. Sunlight, fresh air, all the good stuff. I've been fired up uh, lately. Pretty much, yeah, I've been, I've been like, you know, kind of just going like this. Peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, and peaks and valleys. Just like everybody else in business and everything like that. And I just wanted to, you know on the way to the gym, kind of tell you guys a little bit about how I'm feeling today. Um, so, you guys know on Instagram or by social media that I have my own businesses, whether I show them or I don't. And recently, obviously, this series is more so about the business aspect of things and then showing you guys motive um, as we go on, which is something I'm really, really excited about, obviously. and. I've been noticing so many different influencers that I follow um, throughout the years. <clears throat> Everyone's starting their own business, whether it be their own coaching business, whether it be their own merch line, whether it be whatever, right? Diversifying. And one of the most important things, what, I mean, also friends, like personal friends who don't really, aren't really huge on social media, they're also starting their own businesses, which is great. It's so good to see people diversify themselves and extend themselves out to the world and just be courageous and and um, you know willing to put their hard-earned money into business their hard-earned time their free time whatever it is they have and one of the things that you know I think everyone has troubles with um, everybody whether you are extremely um, successful in business or just up and coming um, there's always people that you will compare yourselves to. Um, and I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Because you know, sometimes you look up to these people and you have aspirations to be like them. But sometimes also remember that when you're starting out your business, remember that to never compare yourself to their business, right? Your first launch or your first initial opening of the company, maybe you don't do the numbers you wanna do. Maybe, maybe uh, you know, you're comparing yourself to a business that's like already established, five, 10, 15 years old, and you've done well in the first initial opening of the company and, and you wish you were there, but you know, and one of the most important things that I've learned in the value of business is that we all go through shit. We all have sleepless nights, we all have struggles, we all have you know, times where we just feel like we aren't doing enough or, you know, maybe something we're doing isn't working or, or something, right? And I just want to let you guys know that we all feel like that. 
Um, you know, I, I myself have gone through so many different trials um, and tribulations of business, mistakes. I don't like to call them mistakes because you just learn from them. Learning curves. Um, and I mean, it's stressful. Like there's no way around. There's not another word that is used more in business than the word stressful, overwhelming, overbearing, those kinds of words. But let me tell you something, right? If you're in business and you've decided to step out of the box and do something extra for yourself, if you have a nine to five and you spend those eight hours at work and you're coming home and you spend another eight hours on your craft or you're, and, and you're focused on building that extra income for yourself, you're doing something right. You're headed in the right direction. Never give up, right? If you're finding, if you're finding yourself stuck in the same place that you were two, three, four years ago, then obviously you need to reevaluate what you're doing. But let me tell you something, man. I don't, I can't count how many times I felt that I wasn't doing something right. That what I wasn't doing wasn't working. Um, and you always, you're always gonna doubt yourself. And those are days that like so many people just want to give up. But like, even even with motive, right? It, our business, um, we just had our very first launch this past weekend, um, January um, 26th, and it was tough to get to that point. It was so tough, January 23rd. It was so tough to get to that point because there were so many times in business when we were building it, that it was just like, when we were going through so many runs of clothing, the sizing, the fabric, the fit, everything, there was so many times where we felt like, yo, like maybe this, or I personally, I can't speak for everybody else, but I just felt like, yo, like, are we, like, what are we doing? Like, are, are, we, are we not cut out for this? Are we, you know, There's so many sleepless nights between like all of us, I think. Um, and it's just so cool to see our very, very first drop of our company come to life this past week. And, and just looking back on the footage now, and maybe when I look back a year from now, we'll, we'll see how far we've really, really come, right? And our, first, our very first drop was huge. I mean, it was massive for us. I'm so grateful for the way everything turned out, right? I have su such successful partners. We we have great supporters of the business, and uh, but it wasn't easy, man. It, it was so difficult, and it was just one year. It was one year, 365 days of, of planning and 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 sampling just to have someone put on a pair of pants and say, like, "Yo, these are fire," because uh, we've had such great feedback. And let me tell you something, man. Despite all the days that we felt like giving up, we didn't, man. And I will say that when you're starting your own business, not everybody's cut out for it. Not everybody's cut out to, to, to keep, um, you know, keep pushing through, right? Because some people, I mean, it's not some, but most, if not majority, maybe like 95, 99%, they give up, man. And if you're that one or 5% or whatever that population seems to be, you're ahead of everybody else. Um, it's so worth it, man. Like, I just wanna tell you guys, like, in this series, I am really just a different version of myself than I ever was on YouTube. And, um, you know, I've changed a lot, right? I've grown so much in learning business, learning more about myself, and <clears throat> it's, a, it's a thing, it's a thing that you learn in life that when you're going through it, you don't value it. But when you are looking back six months from that time or three months from that time, you realize like, yo, like I wasn't doing that bad. Like I was, I was in the trenches, man. And look where I am now because I never gave up. And I just want to tell you guys, man, like it's, the feeling is rewarding. And I guess the moral of the story before I keep rambling is never give up, man. And all those days that you really feel like just comparing yourself with your favorite influencers and you know how come you can't be there or what are you doing that, and you're trying to copy their blueprint sometimes that's just not the way to do it man and stop comparing yourself that's it I mean it's as simple as that just 
stop comparing yourself to someone who's been in business for a while or been doing it for a while and maybe they've followed a different path or maybe they found success faster than you and things like that. So that's kind of my whole thing, man. And um, I hope that like this talk kind of fires you up a little bit and, you know, just spilling my feelings here a little bit. So, so today is January 30th. Uh, pardon my hair. This is how I wake up. Uh, this morning I've been working on the newsletter um, and some additional content for Instagram, my my Instagram, Zephyr's Instagram, and uh, obviously the newsletter and some last minute touches on the website for Zephyr Collection. Zephyr Collection is uh, having our season five collection release today. Um, and I just wanna kinda give you guys a little rundown on like what I do when it comes to a day like today. So, this is actually this is actually the newsletter um, actually this is this is the updated one so what I'll do is like I use a company called MailChimp and what I do is actually um, you know I create my own newsletters so I want to show you guys like when someone when I send out uh, you know a newsletter this is the content that I put um, so it says introducing season five yada yada better days are coming this is our iridescent shirt I'm so excited um, some content man and, and uh, just really really different kinds of content from motive and you may be wondering uh, how do I you know differentiate the two brands one is street fashion and one is athleisure the content is obviously completely different and uh, I'm just really happy at how everything turned out like obviously Zephyr collection is owned exclusively by me and so everything that it, that is done in this brand is by me. And so um, with this whole brand or this whole like collection release, I've been working on it for so long. And all of 2020, I've really been prioritizing. Most of 2020, I've really been prioritizing motive. And uh, you know, I finally gotten back into it. And we have a lot of different clothing coming out this year for Zephyr and for Motive, of course. And uh, we go live at noon Central Standard Time. So I'm just making sure that everything is legit. Just so hyped, man. And um, this is a really special uh, collection for me because, you know, it's it's uh, Better Days Are Coming is all about like the whole COVID thing about, you know, how everyone's had a really shitty year and that to always look towards the light. Um, I did a, I gave my, my homie Nick or Nico a platform to voice his creativity and I think both of us have did done extremely well in um, you know these products. Obviously, my T-shirts, as you know, all original modal spandex, so super super high quality as always. And at noon, I press the live button on our website, open the website, and and that's it, man. So I am so hyped on this. Um, yeah, so. You want to know how our Sunday is going? Things we do for Motive. Motive shoot today in a, so I like to say, abandoned property. We are currently filming for our next campaign and hope that we don't uh, get kicked out. But Kelvin recommended this place. So we're going to see what we can do and uh, hope that we don't get kicked out. Or find a dead body. What up, dude? What up? What up? <laughs> Tell them where we're at. Uh, this we is are fucking at the crazy. Palace of the Golden Orbs. It's super abandoned, bro. Yeah, very abandoned. And very, very locked up. Look at this, guys. So inside has been vandalized completely, and instead of just like putting a lock, they actually welded it. Obviously, we have no intention of going inside. We're not gonna further trespass. We're just gonna stay out here because what we're doing is already pretty uh, illegal in my opinion, but Kelvin said this place is dope, so we're gonna try to shoot some red stuff here and uh, see how it all turns out. Pretty dope, pretty dope. All right, so location two. We are now at a Buddhist temple. We left the spot. I know, I know, I know. I don't even know what that means. Motive brand. Thằng này, man, đẹp trai quá. Guys, look how beautiful this place is. So there's like 
like four complexes to the whole place. This is like the backside. And it's all like tons of garden work, everything, and so excited. This is about to be so good. So she's wearing red transition joggers, red bomber, red crop tank. I am wearing the red bomber. We have <coughs> Jody, we have Fia, and we have Jaime. Jody and Hi uh, Jody and Fia were actually our first models for our, our first collection release. So you know they're back. We love the way they worked with our brand, and uh, we're so excited. <laughs> So in starting this brand, we always talked about bringing culture to the to the brand, bringing culture to the industry. And one of the things, one of the reasons why I chose this campaign is because I see a lot of big brands like Lululemon, Nike, Gucci, Prada, Louis Vuitton, um, Adidas. They all, like all the big brands, right? You gotta follow their trends, right? They are extremely uh, adventurous, they're daring in their content. And one of the most important things that when we built this brand, obviously besides the people that are involved in this brand, our main goal was to have beauty in the brand, um, you know, and not just have gym shoots, but you know, also things that are relevant to why we are doing a brand, right? Because the most important thing when you're doing content with anything that you're shooting is consistency and relevance to your brand. Like, you know, you won't see me shooting like, I don't know, anyways. The Chinese New Year thing is all about diversity. It's all about bringing um, culture to the table. And for us, red is obviously, you know, with everything going on right now, coronavirus, a lot of people, you know, losing their jobs, um, and just a lot of bad things happening in the world. Chinese New Year always brings, uh, uh, um, always has a, a good place in my heart because it brings warmth, it brings fortune, it brings uh, uh, good luck to those, you know, that aren't doing so well and so like obviously me being buddhist and and being chinese like it's not just about the whole like chinese new year or just about me but it, the, the the color red displays fortune and, and good fortune to people and everything like that so i'm excited what do you think about this uh chinese new year campaign i'm really excited definitely Nothing I have ever experienced or like been involved with, but I think it's super personal, so I love it. It's exciting. Successful shoot. We have finished. Uh, I think hopefully we got enough content. Guys, building your own brand is all about one, creativity, right? The vision, uh, the people involved, consistency, and then Secondly, which is the most important factor, is having fun with it. For us, you know, every single shoot obviously means something to us, building this brand from the ground up, um, and then just kind of like experimentation and kind of making your own mistakes and getting better at certain things because, you know, hopefully in the future you don't make the same mistake twice. Not that we've made mistakes, but I'm saying, you know, as you build a brand and as you diversify your content you're gonna learn some things and you certain things you envision might not work out the way it's supposed to and that's okay and so i just want to tell you guys like with a brand no matter how big how small whatever kind of brand you are experiment and don't be afraid to be adventurous and uh just have fun with it inventory manager you gonna get some fun? huh what's the good uh, how do you think this shoot went? Want to get went, some bro? fur? How do you, you want to get some fur? How do you think the shoot went? You want to get some fur? <laughs> it went good. Yeah. I can't wait to see it, man. This is, remember, this is building the brand. Building the brand. Episode two. Episode two, yeah. Episode two, straight into uh, our Lunar New Year collection. Yeah. Kelvin said he's going to make us some great, a great video. Hopefully. Content. Hopefully. I know this campaign means a lot to Daniel, so it's really cool to do something like this. Bringing a little splash of culture to our brand, you know? I think it's gonna be good. Yeah, so I was telling them, I was like, when you build a campaign and you do photo shoots and stuff, it's important to like keep it consistent and not just shoot anywhere, 
just because it's cool it has to like have a meaning right yeah a lot of people build brands that they just do shoots wherever and then the products just it doesn't it doesn't coincide with like what they're actually trying to sell so it has to make sense with the brand and i was also telling them yeah, like i think all of the accents of our pieces it all brings in the the culture and the meaning behind the lunar new year you know so it's be good. We're about to conclude. Year the of the steel ox? Ox. Steel ox, right? No, just, just ox. Oh. We're about to close and conclude the photo shoot and go eat some fun.